It's one of the most fascinating newsletters, Substack newsletters you can find. It's the, the Dean's Report over at Substack.com. Just you know, plug in Dean's Report and it'll pop right up and you can subscribe to it. It's free and it's just great. And he is a, a, a nationally known comedian and, and a speaker and commentator. Oh, and by the way, he also does a show right here on Sirius XM Channel 127. Dean Obidala, uh, Dean uh, from 6 to 9 p.m., Dean of Radio.com, Dean Obidala.substack.com. Uh, on Twitter, uh, it's at Dean Obadala, uh, on, uh, obviously SXM Progress. Dean, welcome back to the program. Thanks. Great to have you. And great to have you tonight on my show. <laughs> Indeed. As it always becomes the home and home series. So it's we're going to see who wins the day version. It's like a doubleheader. Day it's, it's, game and the night game coming up. It's later. a swap. Before we get into uh, what you've been writing about lately, which is what I wanted to talk to you about, uh, Tony Shalhoub is one of my absolute favorite actors. I, I've seen him in a number of things, but, uh, you know, obviously Monk was the, the, the thing that made him a national star, I believe. I mean, maybe I'm missing sure. something. And uh, I just loved it because uh, I've got enough OCD in me that I could identify with him. I still, uh, you know, count, count uh, syllables on road signs when I'm driving down the street. And if I step on a crack with my left foot, I have to hit the next one with my right foot. That's how bad I am. Um, wow. And, 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 and Monk was like, oh, this is me. So anyhow, right. uh, you got this gig going with this guy, this, this uh, benefit. Uh, tell us about mm -hmm. the group that it's going to benefit and, and, and the gig. Sure. Well, it's the New York Arab American Comedy Festival. I've been co-producing with Maysoon Zai, my good friend and comedian, for 20 years. It's our 20th anniversary. And we're doing a show this Sunday in New York City at a Broadway theater at the Town Hall, it's called. And Tony Shalhoub is a special guest at the top. We're going to have a conversation with him. Then it's some great comedians. The festival itself is not for profit, but we are going to donate 100% of the net proceeds to ANERA. And ANERA is a not for profit that helps Palestinian with humanitarian help in Gaza and the West Bank. It's been around since the 1960s. It's worked with USAID. So given what's going on in the Middle East, we want to do something to help the people there who are suffering, who need humanitarian help. So the net proceeds will go there. If people want tickets, ArabComedy.com. And being half Arab myself, I, I will offer people a discount. Instead of haggling, you send me an email, I'll get you discounted tickets. In fact, I will even give a few free tickets out, Dean at DeanOfRadio.com. So if you're in the New York area and you want to come down, I can at least offer you a discount, but maybe even a few free tickets at Dean at DeanOfRadio.com. Very cool. And the website, again, is ArabComedy.com, A-R-A-B, ArabComedy.com. ArabComedy. When you go to that, you'll be on the no-fly list. It's all trade-offs, but still, it's having fun. <laughs> so oh, you get the no, no more flying, but you'll get to see a yeah, comedy. No, I, I, I get it. I get it. Right. So, so Dean, uh, y yesterday and today, your, your Dean's reports have just uh, been so spot on, uh, in, in particular the one uh, yesterday, just uh, I believe it was yesterday, about mm -hmm. uh, Trump's mental decline. Um, you did such a good job of, of just going through and documenting what's going on with this guy. Um, uh, bring us up to speed. Fill us in. Sure. What I did in the article, people can see, it, I actually gave the dates over just the last two months when he's been on the campaign trail. And Donald Trump has been confused about everything from the names of other world leaders, to what state he's in, to who he beat in 2016, to who he's running against in 2024. And this is far different than the Donald Trump from before. There's a Donald Trump before, Tom, we all know. He lies to help himself. We get that. He's delusional about the election. We get that. This is actually confusion. This is cognitive decline. I don't know what's causing it. I'm not going to say it's dementia. It could be. It could be a lack of sleep. It could be stress from having 91 felony charges in four jurisdictions, facing the rest of his life in a prison cell, so he's not sleeping anymore. But this is not the same Trump. And it's very alarming because they're trying to cover for now, like Brian Kilmeade going, oh, when he says uh, Obama, he beat Obama, he knows he meant Biden, but he's not. like, no, you're, you're covering for a confused older gentleman who doesn't know what's going on. And, and I can give a few examples if you'd like. Yeah, go for it. Sure. I mean, the one that really jumped out first for people was in late September, he talked about, in his speech, what he, actually, mid-September, right, he talked about saying, uh, I'll read you the line, because as you know, crooked Joe Biden, the radical left thugs have weaponized law enforcement to arrest their leading political opponent, and leading by a lot, including Obama. So in the same sentence, he says, Biden and Obama. And you might go, well, I, I guess people could make a mistake. But later in that same speech, he mentioned, with Obama, we won an election that everyone said couldn't be won. You never ran against Barack Obama. 
Right. But in the same set, same speech twice, he talked about it. Then I think one of the most alarming things was a week later, he's in South Carolina reminiscing about winning the South Carolina primary. And there he tells the crowd that when I came here, everyone thought Bush was going to win. They thought Bush, because he was a military person, great. And he adds, he got us in the Middle East. How did that work out, right? What Donald Trump did there didn't confuse George and Jeb Bush in name. He confused the people. What he was describing was not Jeb Bush, who he beat in 2016, the former governor who never served in the military. He confused in his mind. He believes he ran against George W. Bush, who did serve in the military, who did lead us into the, lead us into the war in Iraq. There's other examples where he was in New Hampshire. He said Viktor Orban was the leader of Turkey. He knows Orban well. This is not like some other country, where like sometimes people make mistakes. And then mentioned in that same speech that Hungary borders Russia. It doesn't, nor does Turkey, when he was confusing with Turkey. And the media is starting to pick up. The dots are getting closer and closer. He did another thing two weeks after that, just over the weekend, once again, talking about, he said, Victor Orban, they asked him, what would you advise President Obama? And again, you have people trying to say, oh, he is playing a game with Obama, the idea he'll use Obama for Biden. No, that's a cover story, my friends. This is a man who is, it is beyond the lie, beyond the delusionalness. This is someone who doesn't know where he is. He was saying he was in one state when he was in another. And another Republican had to come up and whisper in his ear on camera, tell him, actually, you're not in Iowa. You're in South Dakota right now. And this should be a lot more alarming. And I, and I don't agree with Ron DeSantis at all, really. He agrees with me because I wrote an article a few months ago about this. Trump's not going to the debates because he is hiding this. His handlers are hiding this. He doesn't want to be on the stage for two hours, Tom, because you can't hide that. People are asking questions. There's no teleprompter. And he's going to start saying things that are babbling, that make no sense. And all the Republicans on the stage, except for Vivek, are going to call him out and go, like, what are you talking about here? And, and the moderates, and America's going to see it. And he's not going to debate President Biden either if he's the nominee. Again, I can promise you that he'll be hiding it even more because a year from now, if this continues, he will be more, it'll be more difficult. His me it's a dangerous mental decline. It'll be more acute in 10 to next 10 to 11 months. There's no doubt about that. You don't get better at this. You get worse. Which, so which, we should, go ahead. Okay. I'm just going to say, Tom, and the reality is I write this article knowing Donald Trump's the guy we want to run against. He's the easiest to beat. So I'm not coming from this as a point of view going like, oh, I'm trying to say he's demented or his mental health issues, he shouldn't be president. We all know he shouldn't be president. I'm saying that even if it hurts us and he's not the nominee and they get him more formidable, we have to put our nation first. And calling out where Trump is now, dangerously where he is, we should all be doing it. And again, if it ends up handing the nomination to DeSantis or Nikki Haley, well, we'll have to deal with that. But at least it should be called out now. And the media's got to do a better job. And they're starting to pick it up. I have to be honest, little by little, you're seeing stories about this. Yeah, yeah. We should get Mary Trump on to talk about this because she, sure. she's a good observer of her, of her uncle's uh, mental states. And she's a clinical psychologist. I have you heard from any, you know, her, Bandy Lee, anybody else? Have you talked to any any of these, you know, professionals about this? I, you know, I should, you know it seems like I should go for therapy the way you're saying it. Like, I need professional help. Have you seen my a professional, sister, Dean? I, my sister's just about your mom. anxiety. <laughs> my sister Dawn is a, a doctor. She's Doctor Dawn, mm -hmm. and my brother-in-law is a doctor. But they're both psychologists. He's treating, mm -hmm. so I could go to them for help. But I had Bandy Lee on. Bef not to ask about this, but a little bit about a month and a half ago. Yeah, and it's a good idea to to book her again it, to it, talk about more. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it raises the question. I mean, which is more dangerous: a guy in the White House who who has dementia, or a guy in the White House who openly admires Adolf Hitler and wants to reinvent America as Nazi Germany? Right, and, and are they intertwined? Is the bigger both, question, yeah. right, Tom? That's what's going on here. He's losing the ability to have any filter. Even he understands you don't. Quote Hitler, he did. Like, there's no. But see, that was that him. was in a speech that I'm guessing was written by Stephen Miller, and and Stephen Probably. Miller, I mean, was the architect of the of the tearing children from their parents' family, in fact, from their parents' thing. I mean, you know, he he's he's pretty hardcore right wing. Uh, I, That's a good point, I, and and it is. But don't forget, and all that comes together. Is it his handlers? Does Donald Trump that oblivious to where he is? I mean, it's funny when Ron DeSantis says it's sad looking at Trump today. He's not the same person as 2016. He's not the same person as 2020. And that was an awful person in 2020 for different reasons here. Yeah. So 
is Donald Trump reading Hitler's language on the teleprompter and, and not knowing, calling your political opponents vermin who are the greatest threat to this country, that you've crossed the line? Maybe not. Maybe it's consistent with Trump. This is a, a bitter, angry person who, in a second, if he loses the election before the more trials happen afterwards, he will flee to another country in all likelihood because yeah. why he hates America. He'll hate America more than ever at that point. And yeah. they literally hate America, not like the way they call us, like we hate America, like he will have turned on this nation and flee. So it, it is dangerous. The, the two of them together, very dangerous. Those two ideas, someone unhinged who has no grasp in reality and also someone who is so driven by anger, revenge, promising to be a retribution, promising literally to say at CPAC a few months ago, I will liberate America from these scoundrels. Where are the scoundrels, Tom? Right. Have you ever heard a president so can I say they want to liberate America from their political opponents? No, this We've is this is totally novel rhetoric. Right. <laughs> this is very deeply you know, I wrote an article today for, for a substack about the idea of it can happen here. Well, it's happening, folks, and that yeah. it is fascism. And if you wonder what it was like to live in thirties, nineteen thirties, early Germany, well, we're all getting a taste of it thanks to this guy, this Donald Trump in MAGA. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. So what, what country do you think he's going to flee to if he gets convicted? My, my bet is Saudi I, Arabia. Well, it's Saudi or Russia. I think those are the two. Though that's the yeah. best money. I think Hungary is a chance. But I don't think he'll be in Europe. I think he'll want to go yeah. to Saudi or, or Russia. I don't really think he'll go to Russia because he's afraid that uh, Putin will die on him. Or he'll eat a meal that Putin had prepared. A special yeah, meal he'll fall Putin. out a window. Like, like, you just never know. Sort of like his he'll wife let him build did, Trump Tower. Yeah. Right. So who knows how that works out? Look, yeah. This is a dangerous man. And... And I'm glad the Fox News complaining today. They mainstream media called Trump Hitler 13 times. People didn't call him Hitler. They said he is quoting from Hitler. He is not Hitler. Hitler is a unique evil. Trump yeah. might be capable of that, but he's not there yet. He is quoting Hitler and Mussolini. And we have to call out in no time for timidity, my friends. The stakes are too high. Amen. The great Dean Obidala. You can listen to him right here on Sirius XM Channel 127. Thanks, Dean.